So in this film, we're looking at adjustment layers. So because it has the word layers in it, we should pull open the layers palette. So I'm just dragging it from its docking um, on the uh, side stations here and basically just pulling it onto the, uh, the desktop. And as you can see with this image, it's got lots of different um, things going on. And what we can see though is some special icons running down the sides here, including the colors. And these are all adjustment layers. And we're going to be able to use these to affect all or part of the layer below or the overall image, depending on what you're trying to do. So as far as the look and the feel to the image is concerned, um, we don't have to make destructive changes to an image. So for instance, when we've used uh, levels in the past, so let's just open another photograph for a second, and we take it and we just go to image adjustments and we go levels. And then we say darken the midpoint, darken the uh, black point, highlight it and whatever, and we press OK to it. Well, technically, it's it's destructive. We've thrown away information of that photograph. And if we went on and on and on, we'd have to step back through history, being able to actually re change that levels command because basically if I go back into levels again now you can see how all that information has been lost and if you're not aware when we're adjusting photographs basically it is throwing information away so let's just look at it now control L look at the levels as it is if we make some severe adjustments to an image and then we go to do it again, you can see how a lot of the information is just being thrown away because we're in a destruction mode. And this is where we use adjustment layers. So in the same way, if I just click on to the little kind of half moon icon and I select levels, it brings up a different dialog box, as you can see here. And what this is allowing me to do is basically make the same adjustments as I just did and I can move on to doing something else even. Let's go and add a solid color. Let's go and add a red. Let's turn it into screen mode. Let's put it down in a percentage. But basically I can still go back and adjust the levels to where it once was. So I haven't lost any of that information. So as far as um, the adjustment uh, layers are concerned, they're fully adjustable and they make any changes that we're really doing in a non-destructive way. Even, uh, to some extent, a smart object, if I just control J to duplicate the background layer, if I right click onto the gray area here and I convert it to a smart object, technically in itself, this becomes an adjustment layer because I can go back and do anything to it. So as far as the levels is concerned, I can go into this image. It opens up a new image. I can now uh, go in and basically uh, add the solid color in, change it to a blue, turn that into hard light, drop the percentage down. And basically, as soon as I save this now, this also becomes an adjustment layer because it is a smart ob object. In other words, if I double click onto the photograph again, it reopens itself and I can go and change it to another color. So we're never losing its adjustability. That's the key thing. So when you're making adjustments, even if it's the likes of uh, levels, color, black and white, even a photo fil filter as such, be aware that we can actually access them straight from here. There is a, a quicker way to actually add an adjustment layer as well. It comes in its own palette. And as soon as I add a uh, adjustment layer from here, you can see it instantly comes onto the layers um, palette docking station here as such really. So once more, um, two ways to access it, e either from the layers palette and the half moon icon itself, or from the actual adjustments palette um, that is actually stored on the docking stations as well. And what, what we have here, it's uh, 
let me just make that a little bit bigger for you so we have a brightness and contrast levels curves we have a exposure a, vi a vibrance hue saturation color balance black and white photo filters channel mixer color lookup so this is where we can actually look at a very specific color to do with an image a little bit more of the advanced classes uh, create a new inverted adjustment layer create a new po posterizer adjustment layer create a new threshold adjustment layer create a selective color adjustment layer and create a new gradient map adjustment layer as well so think about what you are going to be doing with an image before you start fiddling with an image and probably you're going to end up using the adjustment layers more than anything else because remember they are non-destructive if you're saving the file initially as a PSD file before then flattening it and saving it as a JPEG file.